Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you. Uh, last uh, Saturday, we talked about this uh, retro variety family, and uh, it was a combined class with the Galuki. And uh, we tried to understand about the uh, family characteristics and uh, the most peculiar thing about this uh, retro variety, about this uh, uh, reverse transcriptase enzyme, and how uh, the viral RNA converted into uh, DNA and uh, with long terminal repeats, how they can get integrated with the host cell chromosome as pro virus status and subsequently uh, its replication initiates. And that gives rise to uh, a property with the virus that some of uh, some of the members can cause uh, uncontrolled proliferation of cells, what we call the tumor formation. And um, important infections that causes uh, uh, tumor formation uh, that we have discussed it. And uh, there are many informations in that particular chapter uh, regarding your um, uh, presence of uh, viral oncosin V on and the location of the viral oncosin within the ENV gene coded for the envelope plaque of proteins makes the virus as an application defective virus. And always they need the help of a helper virus which is a replication competent retrovirus uh, uh, to complete its uh, replication cycle. These are some of the uh, uh, very interesting aspect of uh, that group of viruses. And the infections like uh, avian leukosis, how it can cause the B-cell tumor formation. Then we, we discussed about the kind of infectious anemia, uh, another very uh, uh, highly fatal disease in horse uh, that we discussed it. Besides an example of a slow virus infection, which may be where the incubation period goes up to two years. So uh, these are some of the, including the bovine leukemia virus infection we discussed. It. I guess uh, the, the concepts are clear to you. And if not, please do uh, put questions and queries and read the books. And if you are not understanding the things, uh, I'm here to help you out. Okay. So in today's session, I'm planning to cover up uh, two family. Uh, with uh, uh, one one uh, disease in both the family. Uh, one is the Toga variety family. So uh, among the RNA viruses, so this uh, group of viruses uh, um, they had a very peculiar um, uh, that uh, arrangement uh, within this uh, uh, and this is an virus and it's uh, acosahedral symmetry. Because of the symmetric arrangement of the scapsis, gives rise to a cloak face appearance. And the word toga derived from the word clock, just like the wall clock, uh, that kind of appearance we can see under the electron microscope. As you know, earlier also we talked about the rota viruses. So rota means wheel, wheel like appearance that happened in the Rio variety family. Likewise, there are many viruses where. In fact, the coronaviruses, the crowns of it like a protein projection that can be seen in the electron microscope, just like a crown of a king, that's why they call it the corona variety. So likewise here also the toga variety, the name derived from the clock shaped appearance, clock face appearance of the virus and the electron microscope. And that is because of the cap sheet arrangement to form the hydroxyhydro symmetry. So, Mm, uh, one of the disease which is very common to the human, like the rubella infection that causes the uh, uh, mumps uh, in children as well as sometimes in adults, uh, that the ruby virus mm, is in a toga virus uh, uh, family under the toga variety. Of course, we are not going to discuss about the uh, rubella infection, it's exclusively a human infection. So uh, we are having some uh, important disease of equine, particularly Eastern equine encephalitis, Western and the Venezuela. And these three equine encephalitis conditions uh, are produced by some members of the variety family that uh, we are going to discuss uh, uh, this tree infection. Uh, this uh, the, 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 the equine infections uh, taken very seriously in those uh, areas where uh, the vectors are uh, prevalent and the disease is endemic because uh, it may cause this large scale mortality. So, uh, this family includes this alpha and the ruby, these two group. And under alpha virus, uh, Eastern equine encephalitis, Western equine encephalitis. This Eastern and Western is related to uh, 
eastern coast of uh, USA and the western coast, uh, western Equinian Circle IP is particularly in the uh, California side. This uh, this is uh, very very common. Whereas the eastern are seen to the eastern part of the Mississippi River. Okay. Uh, and later on, uh, another similar kind of disease, of course, the same virus is uh, produced, is called Venezuelan equine encephalitis. Uh, these three infections uh, are uh, important for equine and causes a loss of mortality. And in fact, uh, uh, this uh, uh, infection also can be transmitted to human. And uh, with severe intensity, encephalitis conditions are seen in um is it people as well as in the uh, young uh, people uh, this uh, group again alpha virus include a uh, member you'll be knowing about the chikungunya infection it's uh, we encountered uh, uh, the human infections in india also we see the chikungunya outbreak in uh, southern peninsula in india so this is another member of alpha virus of course many others are there including the Brahmos forest and young young virus uh, uh, these are some of the member uh, one of the characteristics of this alpha viruses are that they are arthropod born infections uh, or other way we can say some of the arthropods mostly the mosquitoes act as a uh, biological vector they can harbor the virus in their body cavity and can Mm, um, uh, related to transmission of the disease in the uh, uh, among the animals and the human. So earlier these are classically uh, uh, discussed under the arboviridae family. As I said, there uh, it was no more we call it any family of arboviridae. All the arthropod-borne viral infections were discussed under a group called as arbo. Arbo viruses means arthropod-borne uh, viruses. So uh, this is uh, uh, the alpha virus or example of that. Uh, let us come to uh, some of the uh, characteristics of this group of virus. First thing is that they are enveloped in an uh, infectious genome. This is a characteristic feature. Earlier also I mentioned about this property. Uh, the, the, the simple meaning is that if you just uh, uh, purify the viral RNA, which is a, a single standard positive sense RNA, and then Somehow, if you push inside the cell and the new virus particularly come out, that means the genome itself is infectious. So this is one characteristic what I have highlighted right from the beginning when we try to understand about the speciality of viruses. Me, why sir. we? Yes, yes. Sir, some people are still trying to get in. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Yes, I guess they are in now. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, this uh, the, the single-stranded RNA viruses mm, in, in, among the other living organisms, this never happened. We never think about uh, extracting the DNA of a bacteria and push it into a cell and new bacteria will get it. No, it never happened. So, but uh, with this group of bacteria, that's quite true. So uh, the, the general term that we use it, the genome is infectious in nature, okay? the positive sense uh, RNA virus, and they fairly can replicate in the uh, cytoplasm of infected host cell. Mm. So uh, uh, icosahedral is their uh, nucleocapsid symmetry, and because of this arrangement of the scapsids that give like to an um, clock face appearance uh, under the electron microscope, and uh, we call them as the toga viruses, toga virus family. Yeah. So uh, this virus uh, in the envelope, they express certain important uh, glycoproteins uh, uh, that E2, E3. Mm, these uh, this are neutralizing epitopes expressed on its surface. And E1 glycoprotein is responsible for uh, budding through the cytoplasmic membrane for release from the host cell. So comparatively, it's a smaller genome of 11 to 12 uh, kilo bases. So this uh, virus, we can uh, grow in uh, varieties of system, including the embryonic chicken egg, where the virus can be propagated. Uh, besides uh, the cell cultures, uh, we can very well isolate the virus. However, it is considered to be a, a risky affair to grow these viruses because of its potential hazard and uh, exposure to the human may lead to this infection, okay? 
So some members, they can cause hemagglutination of GURS and second RBC, uh, but uh, for that, uh, the acidic treatment is needed that will uh, convert these epitopes for an hemagglutinating property and then um, the virus can be detected, mostly for diagnostic purpose uh, to, to perform this uh, kind of experiment, okay? So this virus, the uh, receptor, one of the things that we can say, uh, which is widely prevalent, including the mosquitoes. That's why they can also adopt in mosquitoes, and mosquito can harbor this virus in the population. The simple uh, uh, similarity with the dengue virus, uh, and the flavi variety I mentioned about the dengue viruses, where uh, mosquitoes act as a um, uh, vector, and we call it a biological vector. Biological vector, why so? because the virus wants in fact into the mosquitoes can grow and multiply in its body cavity and uh, pro sucking blood uh, can transmit to other animal species. So uh, these are the uh, disease under the alpha viruses. Uh, this is a schematic diagram uh, showing this uh, whole structure, psychocytic symmetry and this envelope and the uh, glycoprotein. Please try to remember the name uh, Toga means uh, the direct is the top face appearance. These are some of the electron microscopic uh, photo, uh, photography where uh, it shows some uh, clock based appearance. Uh, some, uh, just like a wall clock, uh, we can see the, uh, the, the viruses. Okay. Now, coming to the infections, uh, this is turn equine encephalitis. Uh, Western equine and Venezuelan equine encephalitis is three closely related virus. So the descriptions of uh, fatal encephalitis in equine species uh, were there in long back in 1831, but in 1933 only first time the virus was isolated and it was characterized. And it was mostly uh, different regions of uh, Central and the Northern uh, uh, America that this was detected. Later on in Venezuela again, and the whole break was recorded and has been given the name of the legal and equinox of the So uh, if, if you see the case fatality rate uh, is 90%, this is the most worried point, like in LERS and email, case fatality rate goes up to 90% means it is a highly uh, severe form of the disease. So mm. of course, among the outbreaks, we could see some uh, virulent strain and less virulent strain, but uh, the virulent strain can cause the most severe from the disease where the, it can go up to 90%. Okay. What basically we understand that uh, in, in, the, in the bird and mosquito, they, they mainly maintain the virus uh, uh, within themselves. And uh, incidentally, uh, uh, the human and the horse may get the infection. And uh, Another word you'll be encountering, uh, what we call as the dead end host. Dead end host refer to that uh, host where from uh, the virus never transmit to the other. Now, in many instances, it has been found that uh, the human and the uh, horse, they act as a dead end host. Uh, I mean, they are not uh, much uh, responsible for further disease transmission. The virus infection restrict within these two spaces. Either the animal will die or they will recover it. Okay, but uh, um, cannot be confirmed all the times. It says that certain studies, if equine in the acute phase of viremia, when large number of virus particles are circulating in the blood, then the support vector, blood sucking mosquitoes, can mechanically transmit from one animal to the other. It is very well possible. However, most of the time, this is related to maintenance of the virus in these two spaces, mosquitoes and birds. And then even there are certain members uh, where uh, snakes and frogs and rabbits and some sparrows are also harboring this uh, virus. And it is circulating uh, in the uh, wild, uh, uh, what we call as the sylvetic cycle. And then, they didn't host the horse and the human make it it through um, uh, blood sucking arthropods, right? So in 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 any coin as well as the human, uh, basically we can see this fatal uh, uh, encephalitis where uh, the um, 
neuronophasia is in conditions where uh, the nerve uh, damage occur and uh, the, the animal, the human, they show the extreme signs of uh, neurological uh, uh, symptoms and death occur. As we have seen, the case fatality rate may goes up to 95% in equine species. So this is the, the, how the angiotic cycles and the virus is maintained. And incidentally, they may affect the human and horse, uh, which basically called uh, as uh, the dead and host. This is again Venezuelan equine encephalitis. One epidemiological study uh, revealed that instead of bird here, uh, the reservoir host is um, the marsupials and the mosquitoes, the angiotic cycles, they maintain the virus. And this uh, mosquitoes uh, through blood sucking. And basically, you will find this disease incidence is always uh, at, the, at the beginning of the summer month where the vector population is maximum in comparison to the, the winter season. So it is somewhat directly related to the availability of vector spaces in the surroundings uh, for uh, disease occurrence. So uh, from equine, again, this way, the human may get the infection. So this is uh, the epigenetic cycles in the population. So this is uh, Venezuelan Nican encephalitis, uh, sort of uh, transmissions, how it occurred. So please try to remember about this uh, mosquitoes uh, and the bird uh, that act as a reservoir for this particular virus infection. So if you give uh, some focus on the pathology and how actually the disease occurrence takes place, then you'll find through these mosquitoes or bites, uh, the first the virus will be uh, poured down through the blood circulation. And Initially, the dendritic cells, uh, they, they, they capture this virus and the virus can uh, have the ability to grow inside the dendritic cells and they will carry it to the regional lymph nodes where further virus replication takes place. So this is again the neutrophils and the macrophages, the viruses can very well uh, grow uh, as well as with the uh, uh, lymphocytes. So you know, within the lymph nodes, the virus propagations uh, will increase and then the virus will come down to the blood circulation, what we call as the viremia phase, okay? At the secondary viremia phase, the virus uh, are distributed throughout the body uh, organs and they show the tropisms towards the uh, nerve tissues. And uh, through the peripheral nerve, the virus uh, causes the nerve infections where widespread neuronal necrosis and neuropathia, these two conditions are frequently observed. And uh, severe inflammatory reactions, uh, which is indicated by perivascular coughing of mononuclear inflammatory cells is an outcome, uh, pathological uh, outcome of this disease. So uh, the uh, nervine forms are more pronounced and uh, at the same time, depletion of uh, bone marrow cells and lipopenia, lipopenia, and fevers are some of the uh, clinical manifestations in this uh, equine encephalitis uh, condition. All the three conditions are more or less the uh, same type of uh, pathology they exhibit. Okay. So uh, the incubation period five to 14 days after entry of the virus and the animal will start showing this kind of uh, symptoms. And uh, uh, the, 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 the most prominent and the fatal changes that occur because of the encephalitis that produce an altered behavior, hypersensitive stimuli, then involuntary muscle movement, all are because of nervine um, and degenerative changes and endless wandering. These are some of the symptoms. And as you have seen, the case fatality rate of 95 percent goes. Okay. So that's about the uh, equine encephalomalitis condition. Now, uh, if we talk about how the, uh, the virus can be detected or propagated, then you'll find this uh, chicken embryo also, it can be grown. Then uh, beside this, uh, the uh, chicken fibro embryo, fibro cell culture, Viru, uh, RK13, rabbit kidney 13, uh, baby hamster kidney 21, these are the cell lines where easily we can propagate the virus. Of course, the detection of the virus is based on the secondary test uh, like ELISA or uh, in the fluorescent test for uh, conformative detections uh, we have to apply. Okay. At the best, uh, RT-PCR always we uh, recommend for rapid detection. Uh, 
suckling mouse is uh, one uh, system where the, uh, these virus can be propagated for diagnosis is proper. But since alternatively we are having the, the system for so cell culture, uh, definitely we prefer the cell culture system for propagation. Uh, one more thing I uh, like to mention about uh, uh, the avian species, even in the domestic turkeys and chicken, also the disease has been uh, seen and uh, with the same intensity of uh, um, uh, nervine changes and degenerative changes could be observed in the uh, avian species also and can equally cause uh, the mortality in the avian species also, right? In human, basically in the, um, the, the, the old days, people having low immunity are more susceptible as well as the very young one um, that is this incidence has been seen. And this is uh, quite uh, a common infection in the uh, United States of America uh, where this uh, this is endemic. So coming to diagnosis uh, for the disease, clinical signs and symptoms no doubt gives us some information. However, there are many other so confirmatory diagnosis have to go for uh, detection of the virus uh, by different methods, including the molecular detection. Isolation, although we can do it, but this is a uh, risky affair. So until and unless we have this uh, biosafety and biosecurity laboratory, one shouldn't go for isolation of the virus. So one interesting uh, test is IgM ELISA. I hope you understand uh, the importance of IgM ELISA. So, you know, like IgM is always produced to primary uh, stimulus uh, by the immune system. So the presence of IgM antibody in the blood circle is always indicate a recent infection. Please note it down. This is a very frequent expression. And what is the importance of IgM and in disease diagnosis? So IgM, uh, uh, if the level is high in the uh, serum, then we can say that the animal was exposed to the virus very recently. So if there is IgZ detection, so you cannot say it is a recent or past, simply you have to say at a certain point the animal get exposed to the virus, maybe the previous year. So IgM ELISA is a recommended test uh, in the endemic area for uh, detection of, uh, of course, it needs to be correlated with the clinical manifestation of the disease. So as I said, with acidic treatment, the uh, hemagglutination, uh, this virus causes hemagglutination. So HI will be the more appropriate for serum antibody detection. So this is uh, the, the basis of uh, diagnosis. Now coming to the control, uh, the first and foremost, everyone will say, yes, it is the vector control because the vector population is operating the virus and they are responsible for transmission of the virus. Uh, but at the same time, the effective vaccines, uh, that uh, of course, that is a kill vaccine is uh, available for uh, controlling the infection. And usually it is uh, monovalent, bivalent, and trivalent, depending on the needs. If an area is... Uh, all the three types are uh, prevalent, then the trivalent inactivated cell culture uh, drone inactivated vaccines are used with suitable adjuvant for controlling the disease. And this is a regular uh, vaccination uh, practices in those uh, areas. Of course, the disease has not been detected in our country and uh, we don't go for any kind of uh, vaccinations and it's not available in our market. So the kill vaccine is the solution for controlling uh, or limiting the outbreaks uh, in that area. So wherever any uh, vectors are available, uh, it is extremely difficult to uh, eradicate the disease because uh, the, in, the, the, in, the, in, the, um, in the angiotic cycle, they will harbor the virus in the environment. The same issues is with the uh, African swine fever, which is having a uh, tick population, so the only to the tick act as a biological vector. So uh, it is uh, extremely difficult to eradicate uh, those infections where sympathetic you know, uh, samples are present. So that's about this uh, Toga variety, only one uh, infection. Now coming to another uh, RNA virus, it is called the Calici variety family. So here also we are going to discuss only one infection, which is an important infection of calites, particularly in the cats. Can, can, uh, feline uh, calici virus infection. So uh, uh, this is another group of uh, RNA viruses. Uh, and uh, 
the, their name is again related to the special arrangement of the capsomeres to form the capsid layer. Um, basically, they are icosahedral uh, capsids, but the capsid, just like the drop nut that we have discussed in the uh, Rio variety family, here they produce some cup, just like a cup of a depressed area on the surface of the uh, nuclear capsid structure, because of which they are called as calyxi. So the uh, Latin calyx means cup or goblet, just like a depressed uh, surface structures we can see uh, in the uh, this is the electron microscopic pictures here, some depressed area we could see. So I'm, I'll be focusing another computer simulated model of the policy virus uh, surface structure. And these are some goblets or cups of uh, depressed area on its surface. This is an echocidal symmetry, but this kind of um, surface structures uh, could be seen. That is why they are called as Calici and, and the whole family is a Calici variety family. This is the moon, okay. And they are quite uh, completely very small uh, uh, RNA virus and they are non enveloped uh, RNA virus. So, uh, although so many different genera, 11 different genera are there, but uh, we'll be restricting to only the Vasi virus and that to also the feline Calici virus. There is another disease uh, which earlier we used to include in our syllabi is the vesicular exanthema of swine. So this is uh, not a very serious disease. However, it is confused with uh, the foot and mouth disease, uh, which is prevalent in uh, pig and other animals. So vesicular exanthema is another disease under the vesivirus. So these are related to formation of vesicles. That's why they have been called as vesivirus the genus. Uh, of course, the logo virus includes the rabbit hemorrhagic disease. Uh, we are not going to discuss about it. So, coming to the characteristics of Calici virus, they are non enveloped and icosahedral symmetry, and they are again uh, positive sense in the standard RNA. So, I will request to uh, make a list of all the positive sense RNA viruses, all the negative sense RNA viruses, all the double stranded RNA viruses, and uh, try to recollect their name as an example you must remember. So having a very small genome, around 7.4 to 7.7 kilo basis, and size also is quite small, whereas 14 nanometer is the size. Okay. So he, this one is also the infectious RNA, positive sense RNA, and the genome is infectious. So uh, <coughs> this virus, uh, they, um, they, they, they are comparatively resistant to heat and detergent, inactivated below pH 3 only, and fairly they can replicate the cytoplasm of infected host cell. However, a close contact is needed for transmission of this particular virus. So outside the animal host uh, cannot survive for long period. So uh, uh, the, the disease is a feline calici virus infection. So it has been uh, detected from all uh, the, throughout the globes and uh, not only the domestic, even in the wild, particularly the Sita, the disease has been detected. So this is, um, and this infections uh, causes a morbidity of 50% and mortality may goes up to 30%. So in wildlife, 30% mortality is another matter of concern. Even 30% is also quite big figure in case of cat. So uh, this is a, a vesicle formation that takes place in the mouth, in the gum, and uh, even in the skin surfaces, and uh, that may lead to uh, mortality up to 30%. So etiology is feline uh, calici virus, and the family calici variety, and the genus is the Vesi virus. Okay. And so this disease has also been recorded uh, in India. So domestic cat and the cetas are mostly affected and the wild phallids, which is, uh, uh, the wild phallids also, they are equally susceptible to this infection. So uh, uh, of course here, there is no any arthropod vector involved in the disease transmission. It is only the infected animal. They see the virus and in contact, uh, uh, in contact uh, uh, animals uh, may pick up the infections and uh, they may develop the viremia. So the direct contacts and air droplet infections are important for disease transmission. So basically, uh, you'll find this virus, uh, they can uh, affect the respiratory 
uh, tract infections. So upper respiratory tract leads to conjunctivitis, rhinitis, tracheitis, uh, and then uh, even uh, in the in, in, in case of uh, the lower respiratory tract, in severe cases, the bronchopneumonia and a respiratory distress like this may and coughing uh, or general consequences of uh, clinical manifestations shown in this particular uh, infection. Okay, so uh, the disease again is from a generalized uh, uh, infections where. Uh, the ulceration initially, initially there is development of some uh, epithelium, particularly in the tongue, palate, lip, nose, paws, uh, even in the uh, uh, paws, hairless part of the body, you can see. And even the nearby the um, uh, nose, the facial area also, some ulcer formations, vesicle formation takes place. Later on, it uh, 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 ulcerations occur. And this is a characteristic feature of the disease. From this time, we can find it out the lesions. Okay, so there is another uh, clinical manifestation, what is called as the limping syndrome, and it is due to the deposition of immune complex in the joints and muscles. So, particularly in the tonic form, this uh, immune complex depositions lead to uh, arthritis uh, conditions in uh, colites, and um, the the animals will show some. Uh, limping or limbness they will exhibit. So limping syndrome is uh, consequences of those calciferous infection. So in the gums and uh, tongue area, we can see this kind of lesions uh, in the nostrils and nearby the facial area. Initially, there is vesicle formation in later on structures and the animal, they exhibit the signs of uh, respiratory distress. Conjunctivitis, rhinitis, this will be the, uh, the typical respiratory symptoms uh, will be exhibited by the animal. So this is a characteristic features where the tongue, we can see this uh, vesicle formation and later on it will also, it is a very painful condition uh, we could see in the animal. So this is the characteristics of uh, the line Kelsey virus, okay. So uh, in artery variety, there is one infection. I, of course, we have not discussed it uh, details just uh, I highlighted the feline infectious peritonitis infection. That is another considered to be a highly fatal disease in feline, uh, sorry. So uh, you should have a list of uh, the important feline disease. Uh, and this is one of uh, one first. So the, uh, this is a picture I copied from the Fenner Veterinary Virology where uh, it's showing the cause uh, of cat infected with virulent systemic feline calcivirus infection. So just imagine what will be the uh, painful condition the animal will exhibit. So coming to the diagnosis of uh, uh, calcivirus infection in cat. So clinical signs of symptoms are quite uh, uh, distinct and uh, we can get a lot of information and idea about the prevalence of the disease on the basis of this clinical sense of symptoms. Uh, however, for confirmatory detections, we can collect the samples, uh, metal swab, or swab, blood, serum, and then we can go for antigen and antibody detection process for uh, disease diagnosis. Similarly, we can go for the RT-PCR test, again, for molecular detection. So this is the diagnostic approach. So it is possible to isolate the virus in CRFT uh, glandularly feline kidney cells, and uh, the virus can be detected. Uh, and uh, here, they produce the cytopathic effect of sensation formation, and uh, the virus can be detected by uh, isolation and so confirmation by the secondary and logical method. Okay, so that's for the diagnosis of uh, uh, feline calcivirus infection. Now, uh, the live attenuated vaccines are available for controlling the infection, usually in the combined with other like feline dinotracheitis and calicivirus combinations, you can see. These are modified live vaccines and it can give very well protections against the infection. So, um, uh, so the, 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 the vaccination schedules is as far as company's recommendation, um, we should go. Uh, here again, the points of maternal antibody matters until and unless the maternal antibody is uh, removed, uh, we shouldn't go for vaccination. So that generally at ninth week, uh, the vaccination uh, starts. So these are some live attenuated uh, vaccines uh, uh, which can give protection against this infection. 
So this is uh, about this again, policy where it came in. They said it's two infection, the Togo viruses and the dirty coin, uh, um, Eastern equine encephalitis, Western and Venezuelan on, uh, under the Calici virus, the Salam Calici virus infection. So this keep it in record. So uh, this much uh, uh, is for today's discussion. If you have any uh, queries or any questions, uh, we, can, we can discuss. Again, the number of students participating in the class is uh, decreasing. I don't know the reason why. Mm, we are trying our best to make uh, help you. I don't know if some of you are only 26 students have joined into this session. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I will continue as per our schedule. Uh, uh, the next class uh, probably will be talking about the prions uh, that's left out, and then we'll switch it to the DNA virus family. Uh,